it's uh, very large as uh, NASA projects go. Uh, most of our satellites are not quite that big, um, but it turned out to be worth the, worth all that effort because of what we found. And again, what were the what were the uh, challenges that you had? Uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, you knew what you wanted to do, but you had no idea really how to do it because it was so difficult. Well, the challenges were just that, that uh, nobody knew what to do. Uh, we had lots of good ideas. We could draw drawings of what we wanted, uh, but uh, we knew they weren't good enough. We had to actually build things that were like what we wanted to fly so we could learn if it really was true. Uh, so we had lots of apparatus to build in the lab, uh, in the university labs, in uh, our partner labs at JPL and, uh, and Berkeley and MIT. We built things to see, well, does this idea really work? And after a few years of that, then we said, yeah, it really does work, but you have to change it a bit. It must have required, uh, and you were the project scientist. I was a project scientist, also a principal investigator for one of the three instruments. So I had my hands pretty full with so, things to do. So you're, you're, you're doing science, uh, but you're also managing a huge well, team of people. I, right? I think it's actually better to say I'm working with a huge team of people that are managed by managers who really know how to do this. Uh, scientists, uh, some of them are, are good managers, um, but it's a full-time job to manage things. So uh, uh, as scientists, our job was to decide what it was that we should do and then work with the engineers to accomplish that. So that was, it's not really management. It's a, it's a leadership job, but it's not management really. How, how much did you find yourself learning about engineering and uh, acquiring knowledge as you went? Uh, well, I had to learn every, every branch of engineering that applied to satellites, uh, enough so that I could know whether the engineers that I was talking with knew what we needed to do. And so I learned a little bit of cryogenics, a little bit of electronics, a little bit of optics, a little bit of thermal engineering, uh, spacecraft engineering, orbit me mechanics, all the things that were special for our project. And the, most of them are pretty unusual, the way we had to do it. This was only the second NASA mission that had a lot of liquid helium in it, for instance. So everything was new and different for our team. I would have to imagine that uh, that uh, there were a lot of compromises that uh, somebody in your position would have to make in terms of uh, uh, life outside of work, if you will, family life perhaps, uh, and all of these people working, as you mentioned earlier, uh, a lot of overtime, extra time. Uh, was, was it, a, was it I, I'm sure it was very uh, fulfilling, but it was also difficult in some ways? Well, for me it wasn't ever a, was never a difficult choice. You know, I knew that I was working on this thing. It was really important. If I didn't put my whole heart into it, it might not go. And there were a few times when I woke up in the night in a cold sweat and I said, I've told people something wrong. If we don't fix this, it's not going to work. And so I felt a great uh, responsibility that I should do everything I could to make it go. And I think uh, the rest of the team felt the same. Um, you know, when they had to come in nights and weekends to do their tests, I think they knew how important it was. And so it gave them satisfaction at the same time that it was difficult. So COBE was launched in 1989. Yeah. And um, how long before you got some results back? We got results in a few weeks. Uh, and it didn't take too long to tell that the apparatus was working uh, and that we had results that confirmed the Big Bang story. So that was pretty exciting. Do you recall that moment when the data came in and where you were and who you were with and what you were thinking at that point? Well, to tell you the truth, the first time I knew the apparatus was really working, I came into work in the morning and my colleagues that had worked all night handed me a graph with their signature on it and they said, guess what we got? So um, that, then I knew everything was going to work and that when we finished turning that graph into something we would publish, we would get the answer we had all been expecting. And how long was it before you did get published and uh, gave your uh, presentation? It was about six weeks from launch. In other words, not very long. And we worked like crazy to finish the manuscript and get it in the mailbox and then um, be able to talk about it publicly. So there was a period of about three or four weeks there where you, were, you had this bubbling up inside of you, but you really mm, you yeah, couldn't say to, much? Or? Yeah, well, the first thing is make sure it's right. <laughs> there are so many ways to screw up, and nature could fool us. And we could be too eager, you know. So that was the, the big caution. We get it right, too. How did, how did you confirm that for yourself? Uh, we thought about it as many different ways as we could. Uh, but sometimes you just end up going out on a limb. There's no way to prove that you got it right. So, but later on, you do it better. 
And we were very fortunate with the Kobe project. We never had to retract anything. No mistakes had been published that we know of. And so uh, you went, uh, who did you uh, present your paper to again? That was to the American Astronomical Society, and they were meeting right here in Crystal City. And you, you, uh, they knew what was coming, or they? They knew something was coming. They didn't know the answer. We kept our answers to ourselves until they were ready. And that was something we did uh, throughout the whole pro project. Uh, nothing's cooked until it's cooked. And, and you, had, uh, uh, you had known that, as you mentioned before, a lot of measurements had been taken, but they just hadn't been right. Uh, too much information that got in the way? Well, most likely what happened to all the other previous experiments was something warm nearby the, ob uh, the uh, equipment was shining in in some way that we didn't understand. Uh, there are a lot of ways that mistakes can happen, but that's the most difficult one to understand. You know, apparatus is cold, apparatus is warm, but the, the Earth is nearby. And the Earth is so much brighter than what we were trying to measure. That was the biggest problem. So you were up there at the podium, and you had your chart behind you, and uh, uh, as you unveiled it, uh, what happened? Well, I just put the chart on the projector, and uh, and I said what it was, and people stood up and cheered. And can you explain amazing. that for us? I think we just we just uh, saw that. Well, the graph actually is a comparison of the uh, prediction, of the Big Bang theory, which shows a nice smooth curve. Uh, with and the uh, little boxes that are the measurements, and the little boxes are all on the smooth curve, just as we were all hoping. So that's the proof, as close as you can have, that the uh, hot Big Bang is the story of the universe. And that that uh, the top of the graph is basically just the first six seconds. Is that right? Uh, it took nine minutes of good nine. data. Now the apparatus wasn't always working right, so we had to find the good good nine minutes at first. We learned eventually how to control all of that stuff. And they uh, they saw the graph and, and they knew what it meant. And what was the reaction there? Well, they were just thrilled to see it, and um, all those worries that people had had about all the wrong measurements and all the bad theories we'd had to invent to explain the wrong measurements. And it was a huge sense of relief. So that graph is in the textbooks. And uh, Dr. Weiler said earlier that uh, uh, th this group of scientists not given to spontaneous demonstrations uh, give you a standing ovation at They that certainly point. did. It was uh, quite a thrill and uh, quite unexpected to me. So what, ne what happens then in terms of uh, uh, the Nobel Prize, if you will? That there was a period of time that elapsed between. Yeah, there was a long time between those. Um, but uh, the, a couple other things happened with the COBE project. Uh, the second instrument to announce cosmic results uh, was called the DMR, and we made a map of the cosmic background radiation. And it had hot and cold spots in the map that we also think come from the Big Bang itself. So we've observed something about the quantum mechanics that we imagine applies to the Big Bang. So um, when Stephen Hawking saw that picture, he said that was the most important discovery of the century, if not of all time. And so um, now we thought, well, okay, that's pretty interesting, but what did, why is it so important? And so... Um, uh, scientifically, it's important because we now we think we understand something. Uh, but also it's important that we would not be here having this conversation if those little bumps had not been there on that map. Because that's a map that shows the regions of the universe that are going to turn into galaxies and clusters of galaxies and the regions that are going to be empty. So if, if there were no spots, there would be no galaxies and no people. So I guess it's important. Do you uh, think often about what you've accomplished in this respect? Um, no, actually. Now, mostly what I'm thinking about is uh, what I'm working on today, uh, which is, uh, as you know, the James Webb Space Telescope, and how to make sure that that one does what it's supposed to do. So it's the next step in uh, cosmology uh, and many other subjects at the same time uh, as a successor to the Hubble Space Telescope. And that, of course, will uh, start photographing some of the uh, things that Kobe told us were there. Is that right? Well, in a sense. Um, the new telescope uh, extends what the Hubble does by taking pictures of little things, or giant galaxies, really. But uh, it's a different wavelength range, and so it doesn't see the same objects that the COBE could see. Uh, but it, COBE says, we think we know how the universe started off. Then the computer people say, we think we know.